Hello and welcome to the Today's Money Masters. I'm your host, Jean-Paul Menou. The Today's Money Masters competition comprises three professional investors and a novice, each provided with $500,000 to invest. The participants will invest in stocks, bonds, and collective investment schemes. They will share their strategies over a one-year period, at the end of which the top portfolio manager will get to keep 50% of his total earnings. So let's continue with the Masters on this very exciting journey. But first, a word from our sponsors. Have you ever been interested in an IPO but didn't have the time to go in branch and submit all the documents? We've got a solution for that. With NCB Capital Markets Go IPO Portal, you can submit and track your IPO application from any of your favorite devices. No need to go in branch, no need to contact a wealth advisor, no extra fees. And it's accessible to both NCB and non-NCB clients for all our offers. So no excuses. Investing is easier with Go IPO. Visit www. GoIPO.JNCB.com or text to GoIPO to 876-383-1729 and start investing today. Welcome back. On today's program, we are joined by Andre Yap, our professional from the Credit Union Fund Management Company Limited. Andre, how are you do? A little hungry, but I'm good. Welcome back. <laughs> A little hungry. All right. Well, well, we won't keep it too long. Mm -hmm. Andre, the Jamaica Stock Exchange's uh, main market and junior market indices peaked in early August. However, since then, we've discussed both indices have retreated. Are you concerned about the decline in the value of the two? And do you foresee um, this trend reversing anytime soon? What are your thoughts? I mean, you pretty much hit the nail on the top of the head. Um, the main market index and the junior market index both retreated about 7.5% and 9% respectively from okay. their peaks in August. So, of course, I'm a bit concerned about that, considering that's impacting on my personal, per well, my portfolio in the competition. Mm -hmm. But I do take some solace in the fact that I'm not the only one. My fellow contestants are also Everyone feeling is feeling it, right. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of like when you go into an exam, and you come out feeling like, where the hell did these questions come from? And you're like bedaffled, <laughs> but then you see everybody else has the same feeling, so you don't feel that bad anymore. Right. So I don't feel that bad anymore. Okay. Because all of us are going through it. So it's like, yes, even the smart kid in the class is suffering. Great. <laughs> okay. It's, it's wonderful. All right, yeah? good. But yeah, there is a bit of a concern there. So I'm looking at it and I'm wondering, why is this happening? I think this is the mm. most important question to ask. Is it happening because my individual stocks are not performing, or is it happening because the market as a whole is retreating. So this is the type of question that I'm going to ask and I'm going to look for to see how necessary it is for me to act, what level of panic I need to have, and you know, just how do I need to actually cope with this going forward. So I kind of take a top-down look at it, top-down analysis, where I look very broadly, starting at the world economy, narrowing it down to our local economy, to the individual stocks, to kind of see, okay, where did it all go wrong? What mm -hmm. can I do if there's anything I could do? So I'm looking at it wide now. I'm starting globally and I'm saying, okay, what has happened globally that could have actually impacted our portfolio, could have impacted our market, our index for it to be down? And I mean, the only thing that's really happening, look, sorry, internationally, is you know the whole threat of a recession. But this is not new news. This is news that's been out for pretty much since the beginning of the year. I mean, it's been shaped and molded a little bit differently as time has progressed, mm -hmm. but the themes are generally the same. China-US conflict in terms of trade, mm -hmm. you know, is productivity falling, yield, curl yield curve inversion, mm -hmm. you know, where you have longer end of the yield curve, which is say for 10 years, which are longer, being at a lower rate than 10 years, which are shorter, um, you know, that type of thing. Okay. So those things, it's not new. It's happening. So, kind of, why is that would that impact my portfolio between August and now? Not really. So then I narrow it down a little bit more and I look locally at our local economy. I'm saying what factors in the local economy has affected or could have affected the portfolio, right? Is GDP underperforming to a level where you know it kind of starts some panic? Not really. You know, is our trade deficit widening? like exponentially and people are panicking about that. Not really, mm -hmm. you know? Um, is our physical deficit inc increasing, you know? Since the IMF deal ended like a week ago. Not really, mm -hmm. everything's looking great. Okay. With the exception of one thing. Not one thing being the foreign exchange rate, ah. right? So let me just look at the data really quickly. Between August and now the end of October, you know, the foreign exchange rate has actually depreciated 2.3%. Now let's put that in a little bit of context. 
the entirety of last year, our foreign ex our Jamaican dollar depreciated relative to the U.S. dollar by 2.3% for the entirety of last year. Okay. But yet, it's down 2.2% in the space of three months. So that kind of starts a little bit of concern right there. For year to date, the entire year to date for the entire year, sorry. For the entire year to date, we're looking at the Jamaican dollar depreciation. It's down 9 point something percent, 9.3 percent for the entirety of the year. And as I previously said last year, it was down about 2.2, 2.3 percent. So we see where it's actually accelerating there. It has accelerated. What do you think has caused that acceleration? Well, I mean, the fact is, there are a number of factors which can actually affect that. Usually, what affects it is supply and demand. Okay. You know, the ability of our banks and our system to actually supply the foreign exchange that has been demanded. And that will have an impact on whether the rate fluctuates up or down. Okay. Now, generally speaking, this season, this particular time of year is one where we'll see an increase in demand relative to supply. Yes, so when we see that, what generally happens is that when you look at it from a corporate entities in terms of, say, banks and cambios, this is a time when they're looking to churn their portfolio. So when we look at Jamaican dollar depreciating, what it has the effects of doing is actually removing Jamaican dollar liquidity from the market or from our economy. So when it removes that liquidity from the economy, that's less liquidity that's available to be invested in the stock okay, market. Okay, so okay. as I said previously, you know, Cambios and banks are looking to churn their foreign exchange portfolio. So they can look at that relative to investing in stock market and say, hey, right now, either based on profitability or risk, we think that this is the best place to put our money right now and churn the FX portfolio. Mm. So that removes liquidity that would otherwise be in the stock exchange okay. and puts it in this other basket right here. So you get that decline from that. Now, when you think of it trickling through now, you have your suppliers in terms of actual companies that produce goods or sells goods. They have to actually import raw materials in to either produce or just plain inventory to sell. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking towards the Christmas season, you'd probably want to put that order in right about right now about to now. get your inventory in, mm -hmm. you know, for Christmas. So you have that, you know, everything in order for that boom season right there. Those companies are now looking to actually spend more U.S. because they're not going to have their regular inventory. They're going to up their inventory Trying a to. bit to satisfy demand. So sure. that's more foreign exchange being demanded. That's more expenditure. And that means less Jamaican dollar liquidity in the market as well going into the stock exchange. So that's one factor that could have impacted it. Okay. In my opinion, that's the main factor. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a retail perspective, we can say the back-to-school season in August and September there probably caused some retail investors to pull sure. some money out you know, to get ready for back to school, to take care of those expenses, you know, have a little liquidity there. But I think the main factor is the foreign exchange movement. So that's where I pinpoint the reason for the retreating okay. of the indices. And now my question is, is this permanent? How would they write? Or is this transitory? Right. Which means, is it something that's going to be around for a very long time? Or is this something that's, you know, it's seasonal, it's going to go away in a little while? I am of the opinion it's transitory because I think it's more seasonal. Okay. So I, I foresee this kind of retreating a little bit going towards the new year. I mean, it's somewhat of a throwback to like 2014, 2015 when I worked in Treasury. This is something we saw every year. Okay. Around this time of year, the Jamaican dollar runs, you know, the mm. exchange rate runs. It's not really to be that concerned about. So, you know, on a micro level, I spoke about, you know, the Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback in the last time I was yes, here. Yeah. So I won't go into detail. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty confident in my selections. I think these are some companies with a sound outlook. So from that standpoint, it's just something, it's just a little bit of pain you have to go through for the period of time. It's a, it's a part of the ups and downs of the thing. Yeah, the ebbs Richard, and flows. Richard Longmore, our, our novice, uh, spoke the last time about um, the Financial Times saying that the JSE was the top top JSE, top performing stock mm -hmm. exchange in, in, in the world. Um, so that augurs well for, for it, right, going forward. Yeah, and I mean, it's really no need for panic. We're talking about a stock exchange that's up 30% for the year. It's still up 30% for the year. Right, it's retreated probably 4% since August to now. Okay. So you're still up 30% on the year. It's just unfortunate for us because the, com the, in the competition started in July. So mm -hmm. we kind of invested at the peak of the market mm -hmm. into it going down. So that's why you'll see pretty much all of us below market, below our initial starting value right now. Okay. Well, I hope that the powers that be will work on our foreign exchange and get that dollar a little bit stronger as we, we go forward. We have a supply and demand market now, multi-directional. Okay. You know, so we'll see. All right, we'll keep an eye on that one. More with Andre Yap after this break.
Have you ever been interested in an IPO but didn't have the time to go in branch and submit all the documents? We've got a solution for that. With NCB Capital Markets Go IPO Portal, you can submit and track your IPO application from any of your favorite devices. No need to go in branch. No need to contact a wealth advisor. No extra fees. And it's accessible to both NCB and non-NCB clients for all our offers. So no excuses. Investing is easier with Go IPO. Visit www. GoIPO.JNCB.com or text GoIPO to 876-383-1729 and start investing today. The Money Masters Fund. It's all about real growth, safety and security of your assets. The Growth Fund gives higher returns for the investor more focused on growth. Money Masters Funds, providing growth and security, performance and financial peace of mind. We are CUFMC, Credit Union Fund Management Company. Trust. Trust matters. And you can believe in our reliability. Service. We give impeccable attention to your needs. Experience. Careful and prudent are part of our DNA. Know-how. After 70 years working exclusively for credit unions, now we're open to all investors. Go higher. CUFMC, Credit Union Fund Management Company. How we choose to invest our time today often has a propelling effect for what we gain tomorrow. It's like investing in shares. Mommy, is this a share? Yes. You know, she's right. It's similar to how shares work. Companies are publicly listed on the Jamaica stock market. These companies are divided into pieces and these pieces are what are called shares. The owners of these shares are called shareholders. We are speaking today with Andre Yap from the uh, Credit Union Fund Management Company Limited, one of the professionals in the competition. Andre, Cygnus uh, Credit Investment, uh, which is a big part of your portfolio, is set to release their first quarter financials next month. Um, what are your expectations? So if we're speaking about it from like a year over year perspective where we're comparing Q1, which is yet to come out of this year to the previous year, there's really no cause for concern. They're expected to outperform last year's performance easily. That's because last year the company made a loss of about $360,000 in the first quarter of last year. Okay. But it's not because they're a bad company. That's just simply because they haven't deployed all of their actual dry powder, which is investable capital, into lending as yet in that period in time. You know? so okay. It should be easy for them to outperform on a quarter-over-quarter quarter basis. So I'm not really worried about that. What I'm actually looking forward to is to actually see if they'll make an announcement in any time soon, if they will actually come to the market to generate more capital, to actually um, seek more capital, right? So, is that likely? I mean, they made the announcement since May of this year that the board of directors um, approved them coming to the market to raise 1.2 billion Jamaican dollars or the US dollar equivalent in debt financing. And we've yet to see that realized okay. yet. So, I mean, at the end of the year last year, end of the financial year, that is, um, they had $3 million U.S. dollars in dry capital. And we have a quarter which has spanned since then. You'd imagine that they've actually invested and lent out quite a bit of that by now. So they should be coming in some short order to get that capital With income. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I'm a little bit antsy because, you know, we just discussed the foreign exchange movement because they've had $1.2 billion or the USD equivalent. Now, this is not a company that simply transact in Jamaica alone. It's international. 59% of their portfolio is in Jamaica. The other 41% international. If you're doing international business, okay. US dollar is the global currency. You need right. that. So if they're looking to get US currency now, when the exchange rates are a bit, it kind of leaves me a bit antsy. Okay. Added to that, you know, recently Sajikor announced that they're actually going to invest in a fund which kind of does, does the same thing. Um, tries to cater to the same niche, the SME niche that okay. Cygnus goes in. So that kind of, mm. you know, messes up the competitive landscape a little bit for me as an investor in Cygnus. But I'm not really worried because I'm not looking at Cygnus as a company that's going to be sitting there over the period not really doing anything, twiddling their thumbs. Right. They're coming to market to raise debt. Right. Debt has a cost to it. It has a cost. It's interest. 
So over that period of time, I suspect, I conjecture what they've been doing is they've been building out a pipeline of companies to invest in. So as soon as they get that money on board, they can offload it and start generating because you can't really borrow money and not make money on it right not, away. Right. It's just like, it's an un unnecessary cost. Okay. You gotta get that money in to make more money. So I'm still looking forward to Cygnus, still think it's gonna perform well and still pretty bullish on it going forward. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on that one. And we'll continue to keep an eye on your portfolio. Thank you so much. That was Andre Yap giving us his financial thoughts this week. Nice to see you, Andre, as usual. Thank you very much. Join us next week, same time, for the Masters Competition, when we meet with another participant. Follow the pros and the one novice each week on the Masters Competition. Listen and analyze their strategies on RJR 94 FM Thursdays at 8.45 a.m. as they challenge each other to stay ahead. Also, see their portfolios in the Sunday Gleaner. The Masters Competition is a product of Today's Money Limited, brought to you in partnership with NCB Capital Markets Limited, Money Masters Limited, Credit Union Fund Management Company Limited, and the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I'm Jean-Paul Menou. The Masters is another fine product from Today's Money Limited. Mm -hmm.